That is Dixon here, Washington Huskies cornerback, and I'm tapping in with the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Yeah, the mayor of C Town, Ryan Hayes, and his big name guest. Often imitated but never duplicated, I Only Touch Greatness podcast with Ryan Hayes. You're tuning into I Only Touch Greatness podcast, Vancouver's best show with Ryan Hayes. Vancouver's best show with Ryan Hayes. Often imitated but never duplicated, I Only Touch Greatness podcast with Ryan Hayes. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great stakes, great staff. Head over to the John B. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Say hey, St. You. This is a I Only Touch Greatness remix. Scan the code and follow. 
Yo, what's going on? Hey, good, good to meet you. I'm Ryan. I'm Thaddeus, man. Nice to meet you. All right. So you're getting comfortable up here in the Northwest? Oh, yeah. Man, it's beautiful up here. Yeah, I got a couple questions for that coming up. Yeah, I had to throw the Huskies gear on, of course. Yeah, for sure. I got mine on, too, for sure. Yeah, yeah that's good. So, uh, born in California, what was childhood like for you growing up? Childhood for me, man, was crazy. I mean, it, it was fun. It was a fun experience, definitely. Um, you feel me? It was a little bit tough, but, like, for the most part, man, it was just it was just fun growing up. You feel me? Growing up with the people you going to school with, that like, you, you feel me? Yeah, it, it, it was fun growing up in Cali, for sure. It was an experience. Okay. And did you play any other sports growing up? Yeah. So, like, I was, like, a five-sport athlete, and I was, like, I've always been the best player at every sport I played. Basketball, football, baseball, golf, chess. So, like, it really didn't matter. Like, you feel me? I, I played a lot of sports growing up, for real, honestly. Okay. And when did you know that you wanted to focus on football and make it maybe your number one priority? Probably, like, in the eighth grade. In the eighth grade, like, my love for the game kind of just – it just jumped up to a whole nother notch. And, like, I just kind of fell out all the other sports. And I'm like, this really what I want to do in my life. Was there, like, a moment maybe that pushed you? Like, some some people are like, oh, I was, like, 10 years old and I scored my first goal and all of a sudden I was, like, I'm down. Yeah. It was really just the sport I was the best at. Like, yeah. I was just the coldest at football, so I figured I'd just do what I'm, what I'm the best at. Okay. Uh, who influenced you as a young young football player coming up? Is there somebody you tried to mirror your game after? Um, my biggest influence growing up would probably be my older brother, like as far as like developing a love for the game and, and teaching me the game. But who I was watching growing up definitely was Reggie Bush. You mean, I, I, I fell in love with Reggie Bush, man. Pete Carroll and them boys had the Coliseum Rocket back in the day for sure. For sure. And that's one of the questions I have is like, I've always dreamed of going to see a game there at the LA Coliseum. And it just looks like such a great place to go. Ever since Dub C did a music video back called In the Streets and he, he's dancing yeah. around that stadium. Yeah. 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 So ever since then, and then of course with Pete Carroll being from there originally. So I'm a big fan of that. Uh, yeah. um, do you have any pregame rituals? My pregame rituals, um, usually pregame, probably like an hour or two before the game, I try to just catch some sun. I, I like meditating in the sun, visualizing myself, making plays before the game, listen to a lot of music. But it's really just I, I want to make sure I get out in the sun before every game and just visualize myself making them big plays. You know you're in the Pacific Northwest, dude. We're not gonna, you're gonna be, you better get used to the rain. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm getting there. It's not, I've only been up here three weeks, but I, I'm getting there. Yeah. And you're, you're managing to settle in and everything? Yeah, I settled in pretty nice. They got me set up real nice up here. I ain't going to lie. They got me set up real nice up here for sure. Okay. And uh, as far as the stats that I found, I could be wrong, but Hawaii, Fresno, Connecticut, Delaware, at Delaware State all made offers to you. Uh, what, made, what made you choose Washington? Um, it was really the relationships I had with the coaches. Uh, I've been locked in with the coaching staff since they were at Fresno State. So, like, we built a relationship over time to where the point where it was like, why not? Why isn't it Washington? That's the far as why is it? Like, you feel me? Like, so I just felt like Washington was the place for me. And I knew they had a need, and I knew I fit the need. So, you feel me? I, I made the move. Okay. And uh... – do you know there's a music producer with the exact same name as you? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, like, I've been Googling myself, like, growing yeah. up. I always used to Google my name. Now, like, you feel me, stuff actually pops up. So it's kind of crazy to me. But, yeah, it, it's a famous producer with my name. Yeah, I didn't know. Perfect. And when you Google your, Google your name, Sue, in this interview, he's going to show up. Oh, yeah, that's a fact. The, so, yeah, as a, I'm in Vancouver, so I'm, like, two hours north. Of your right. drive and yeah, uh, Canada, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're, we're like right on the border of the Canada, and it's I can go from my house here to uh, I guess it's not CenturyLink anymore, but now it's uh, Lumen Field where the Seahawks play, and I can get there in two hours just driving. So it's that's not that bad. That's not bad. Yeah. It's, it's I believe it's almost like driving to Vegas for from LA. 
Yeah, Vegas is probably like probably just a little bit longer, probably like three hours. But okay. this is a quick turnaround. We you can drive to Vegas and back. Yeah. And you spent two years at Long Beach College. Well, uh, what did those coaches teach you that you can use now that you're at the with my Huskies? Yeah, so yeah, I spent two years at uh, LBCC at Long Beach City. My coaches taught me a lot of stuff. It was mainly like um, I got smarter, like a smarter knowledge of the game, picking up on college schemes, college concepts. Uh, they taught me like why offensive coordinators call the plays that they call at certain times. So like I really feel like I developed like like more mentally at, at Long Beach more than physically. But you know, honestly, it was I, I learned a lot. How are those streets of LA? You know, uh, being in Canada, and I and I love my hip hop, so I just see what the, they tell us in hip hop. But yeah, man, the streets is wicked out here, man. Honestly, you just got to know how to move. You know, you play your cards right, stay around the right group of people. I mean, it shouldn't it shouldn't be too hard to make it out. But you know, uh, a lot of people don't get this opportunity. Like a lot of people I grew up with, so it's just a blessing, and I'm here, honestly. That's just it, and you got to stay focused on those things. Yeah. Um, how important is a young athlete's social media and the stuff that they post online? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very important. Um, honestly, when I was younger, I didn't understand the importance, but, you know, as I kind of got older and I kind of got to understand the business aspect of it, you know, like your, your social media, that's your brand. Like that's how you project yourself to the world. Like not everybody gets to know who you are as a person. So they go on social media and make their assumptions. So like, I feel like you feel me. You gotta have the right stuff on there so you people perceive you the right type of way. That's for sure. We always like to bring up that question because it's like you wouldn't post anything you don't want your grandma to see. Is what a young one of our favorite football guests he told us that it's kind of stuck with us ever since. Yep, yep, thousand percent. Because you never know if you post something ten years later down the line, something could come out from it. So yeah, that's a fact. Everything um, I go up, Stan, for sure. Yeah. And uh, so I know you've only been there for three weeks. Uh, one of the past guests that I had on the show, Misha Powell. I don't know if you've got a chance to meet him yet. Yeah, I met Misha. Yeah. As is, what's one thing that he's kind of taught you that stands out so far? Um, honestly, he, he, he's been a great leader for us, you know. You feel me? He, he actually stepped up like more as a leader today. He actually had a good speech today uh, before the weight room got us real turned up. But, you know, he, he he's taught me a couple of good things. You feel me? Especially as far as like the defense. You know, he, he's definitely a good leader. And I look forward to playing with, bro. Yeah, he was definitely humble. Great guy to be around. Um, So what can we expect being Huskies Nation from you? Yeah, you can expect a lot down corner, man. Honestly, I'm going to tell you straight up, like, I've been seeing, like, what all the Husky fans have been saying about the, uh, the past DBs and, like, what's been going on. But uh, I just feel like I'm somebody that the, the Husky fans could trust, you feel me, especially on third down and passing situations. Okay. And uh, I read somewhere that the Huskies ask you not to go public about your offer. Is that true? <laughs> Yeah. They didn't want you getting recruited to all the other good schools. Mm -hmm. So I guess the like when I was getting recruited here, they really felt like they had a diamond in the rough. Like they felt like they they like they had a gym, and they wanted to pre uh, like protect it. So like I understand where they were coming from, and like they were honest about it. Like other schools, they be trying to play it tricky. Like you feel me, Washington, they just really kept it hundred with me. And yeah, they wanted these schools to do their they homework with recruiting. Like I talked to you feel me, the rest of the schools in the pack. But the only school that pulled the trigger was, was Washington. And you feel me? They told me if you got the Washington offer, you probably going to get, like, 40 more offers. But, like, they only going to get it because you got Washington. So, like, you feel me? We played our cards right, and I'm where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Okay. And you got the nickname Boomin. Is that your nickname, or is that just what you, is that what you wanted your nickname to be? Nah, that's that's just a nickname I got back in the city. Like, hey, uh great. Like, you know, shit, everybody back in L.A., they usually call me Boomin', but up here, you feel me? I don't know. If the nickname stick, are you feel me? It'll stick. But, yeah. Okay. Do you have one that you – a nickname that you want to be called? Uh, a nickname that I want – I mean, I, I'm cool with Boomin'. If it's going to yeah. be any nickname, I would definitely want it to be Boomin'. Okay. If you were an animal, what animal would you be? 
what animal would I be? I would be I would be a silverback gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, can you want to say why? Yeah, I I I really just want to just be like the most primest ape like that there is like a 1400 pound silverback it just fits me so well honestly okay and i always ask that question because i always go with a dolphin because i look like a dolphin because i got no hair and nose <laughs> <laughs> yeah <I mean. laughs> yeah like i'm pretty bald and shit they uh so, so far in the three weeks that you've been here, and, and obviously when they were recruiting, you, know, you must have talked to Coach DeBoer. Um, what's one thing that stands out with the way that he coaches that you really like? Um, coach DeBoer is really like a – he's a laid-back dude, honestly. Like, he's not like these other, like, head coaches that I feel like that are just so strictly business. Like, Coach DeBoer really cares for the kids, and, like, it shows. Like, he's not a coach that you can't just go talk to, like, or just say what's up to when you pass by his office, like, he just a he, he a real humble dude and like he just laid back so down to earth like that's what really stands out to me about Coach DeBoer. What will we find in your playlist? Regulators, I hope. <laughs> oh, nah, not too much regulators. Maybe my pops. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I listen to like a lot of Lil Baby, uh, Lil Dirt. You feel me? I got a cousin from uh, the city named Chance. He be rapping. I got a lot of his stuff on my playlist as well. Okay. Um, what's one obstacle you came across in getting to where you are today? An obstacle I came across having a battle, having a battle getting recruited with my high school coach, man. That's probably the biggest, the biggest obstacle. Um, I haven't really talked about this a lot, but you feel me? I had a I had a high school coach who kind of like talked down on my name to a lot of uh coaches and like it really stunned my my recruiting coming out of um coming out of high school. And that's one of the reasons I had to go to the JUCO route. Okay. And you lit it up in the JUCO. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's why you're in the Huskies. No, nah, that's a fact. Um, if you were having a dream dinner party and you can sit down with three famous people that are alive, who do you want to sit down with? I'm sitting down with, with Lil Baby. I'm sitting down with... I'm sitting down with Jay-Z. And I'm sitting down with Kendrick Lamar. Oh, yeah. Okay, those are three good ones. For me, I always go with Tupac. Yeah. It would be have to, have to have Tupac. My dog's named Tupac. Um, right. And then I have to go with Seth Rogen. He's the comedian, and he's from Vancouver, so I feel like that'd be a good one. And then a little bit of eye candy. I got to see Shakira, maybe. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hey, Shakira, Shakira, good choice, for sure. Something like good it. like that, right? Got a, something nice to look at. Nah, for sure. So, do you, do you have how many pairs of rain boots have they sent you? So I got like, I got like, honestly, I came up here like I bought some boots. Like I got like two, three pair of boots. <laughs> I'm not used to it. I had to throw my sandals away. I ain't gonna lie. I came out of here. I wore some sandals. I stepped in a puddle, man, and they ruined my day. So yeah, hey, you'll see though. You might as well keep one pair of sandals at least. They uh. If we come the summertime when they're pregame tailgating out there and they've got they're all on the water in their boats and they're yeah. there is sunny days. Yeah. I still gotta see the sailgate, man. They tell me the sailgate is kind of crazy. Yeah, I never like I've been going to games for like maybe four or five years, go to a couple a year, uh, when I make the trip down for my Seahawks. Um, I didn't even know about sailgate until they played Stanford this past year. And I, I, I stumbled down there, and I'm like, what the hell is this whole? There's a whole other world of tailgating out here. Nah, yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, they, they be doing it up. I definitely – I'm looking forward to that. That's, yeah, and I guess if you, you plan on playing in every game and stuff, but the – so you probably won't get down there and actually see it, but if there's a chance, yeah, make sure you get down there. It's pretty fun. It's got to be the best tailgates I've seen. It's, I think it's better than the Seahawks. Yeah, you go to yeah. a lot of – Seahawks games? Yeah, I do. Yeah, the, we got season tickets, so. You happen to go to watch the Seahawks play my Raiders? Oh, okay. You're a Raiders fan. I got that coming up here. I was going to ask you, do you have a favorite sports franchise? Yeah, I, I root for the best team in the league, the uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. Oh, best team in the league. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that crap. <laughs> 
They, uh, yeah, I don't know. They could make some changes this year. They, uh, you never know. I'm hearing those rumblings of Tom Brady heading to Vegas. Hey, hey, hey. we, 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 it's going to be some motion going on this offseason for sure. Um, I feel like shipping Derek Carr is that's a that's a good move. Yeah, I've been saying that for years. I, I have as well. The some schools do it. I know Oregon does it. Uh, they do like a rookie initiation or a rookie idol, and you have to sing one song for karaoke. What song are you choosing? If I had to choose a song, I'll try to really choose uh, "Closer" by uh, Go Up Okay. Yeah. I might not be so familiar with that, but. Yeah, nah, for sure. It, it's an old song my mom used to sing. You feel okay. me? Like, Sunday mornings, it'll come on. That's, that's something I'd definitely be able to sing. Okay. And uh, what drives you to get up and train each day? Just just really wanting to put on for my family and change my situation. Um, like, getting up every day and going hard. Like, that's just. You feel me? That's just everyday life. Like, that's just what you get up and do. So, like, just knowing that, you feel me, I, I got some people back home that really depend on me. You feel me? And they rooting for me. That's that's all the motivation I need, honestly, to just get up every day and just, you feel me, leave it all out there. Okay. Do you have a dream stadium you wish to play in one day? Uh, my dream stadium right now, honestly, is Husky Stadium. Yeah. You know? I, I, I want to go play in a packed house, 70,000. You know, the Washington fans, they always do it. They do it up every week. So, all right, that's definitely my dream stadium. Okay, good answer, good answer. Uh, it, it gets loud in there. It's the Seattle fans in general, whether it's hockey or the Seahawks or the Huskies. It gets loud in there for yeah. sure. Yeah, home in the tough, man, for sure. Yeah, that's just it. Um, do you have a favorite sports movie? Uh, favorite sports movie? Mm, probably the The Longest Yard. Okay. Yeah, The Longest yeah. Yard. Definitely. That, that, that movie's a classic. Do you have a favorite Selly or Chirp? Selly or Chirp? Like cell phone? You know, like cel celebration if you, like, say, you got a knockdown or interception. Oh, nah. Nah, I don't really have no, no, no fans chirping or nothing like that. You're not making up your own dance at the gritty or something? <laughs> I do. I do my own little little form or something. You'll see. But I'm such a high-energy player. After I make a big play, I just do I, I do crazy stuff, man. I just let the celebration hey. come. What are some of your uh, short-term goals for this uh, upcoming season? Or is there any that you're setting for yourself? Yeah, short-term goals. Uh, I definitely want to dominate uh, this winter period. Just pretty much as far as just getting my body right, bulletproofing my body, putting some weight on, just getting the overall stronger, you feel me? So I'll just be a lot more durable because your best ability is availability. And, and right now, you feel me, I got to put on a little bit more weight. Okay. And uh, if you were to get into a time machine and go any era in ever, yeah. where would you want to go? I would go to those probably like the late 70s. Like around the time Jack Tatum was playing, I, I feel like you feel me that that's definitely my type of air. It was my type of stuff, my type of ball being played. Okay. And uh what are some of your hobbies outside of football? PlayStation. Yeah. Gotta go you gotta you gotta go to game or yeah, I'll be on Madden. You feel okay. me? I, Madden is is my that's my game. You feel me? I take pride in it. I probably haven't lost a game all year. You feel me? I was just playing my cousin right now before I got on here. I hit yeah. him with like a 40 piece. It was like 40 to zero, but yeah. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, definitely mad. Okay. Yeah. I play a lot of Madden as well. Um, and so it's only been a couple of weeks, but what's your daily routine look like? Uh, so basically, uh, my daily routine, I probably get up at like 6.55, like 7 ish, like 6.55 usually. Uh, Wake up, brush my teeth, eat, head to the facility at probably like 7.30, hop on the light rail. We got lifts and uh, training from 8 to 11.30. So I'll be at the facility from 8 to 11.30. And then I have class usually at around 11.30 to like, or like 12.30 to like 1 or 2-ish. And then I have another class and then study hall from 5 to 6. And then I'm free. Okay. Uh, what are you majoring in? Uh, I'm a major in psychology. 
So I'm definitely, yeah. So I should have my degree at the, at the end of the year, but I, I'm a major in psychology. Okay. Uh, do you have a go-to breakfast? Yeah, go-to breakfast, scrambled eggs, sausage, and toast. I mean, I just feel like you can't go wrong with that, especially how I make toast. Like, you feel me? You can't go wrong with that breakfast. Hang on. How do you make toast? Don't you just toast it? <laughs> you sound like my dad. <laughs> you got the old heads. Us, us old heads just have regular toast. Now nah, I feel you, but like you gotta butter the toast up, but you can't put it like it has to be the specific type of butter that make the bread soft instead of hard, like the little spread butter. You put it yeah. in a uh, toaster, toast it, put some more butter on it, then you slap your jelly on the toast, and you be good. Yeah. Okay. okay. I hear that. I hear that. Uh, do you have a favorite Halloween costume you ever was? Uh, a favorite Halloween costume? Yeah. Definitely, I have a favorite Halloween costume. Yeah, I dressed up as my as my junior college coach. <laughs> I dressed up as my junior college coach, and like, if you seen a picture of him and you seen the the, the costume, you'll definitely you'll definitely crack up a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. Okay, do you have a favorite Disney princess? And we know you guys got one. All these hard guys gotta they got all these hard guys gotta have a princess somewhere. Yeah. My hardest Disney. Princess, probably uh, Pocahontas. Not no princess. Uh, probably Snow White. Okay. Yeah, I, I I rock with Snow White. I used to watch a lot of Snow White when I was a kid. I ain't know why. Okay, for me it's uh, Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Oh yeah, I, that, that one that show taught me one thing: the longer I keep the girl locked up, I can make her love me. Hey, <laughs> hey, that's a fact. <laughs> Do uh, you have a favorite actor or actress? Yeah, favorite actor. I, I like Idris Elba. Oh, yeah. You know who that it's is? Snowfall. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, you, I, I like Idris Elba for sure. He's probably my favorite actor. And you've been kept keeping up to date with Snowfall? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Of course. Snowfall, that's yeah. my show, man. That's, you feel me? Yeah. yeah I, love I, lo I love it, too. We actually interviewed one of the guys, Bucky. He plays the cop. He plays a cop that's always uh he's now corrupt but yeah yeah, yeah. i know who you're talking about yeah he because he's from vancouver so i had him on i had him on the show interviewed him he's a great guy too oh uh, no that's lit right there yeah yeah I don't know the uh okay would you rather go to deep sea or outer space ah <sighs> uh. I'm gonna have to go outer space because I'm not a big guy on water. Like, I'm smooth off the ocean. I don't know what's out there. We don't know what's out there. I'd rather go to outer space than, than deep sea. Okay. You have a favorite time of year, spring, summer, fall, or winter? Um, fall, most definitely. Fall is football season. My favorite time of the year. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. Okay. Cat or dog person? Oh, dog. Yeah, good answer. Yeah. If you could only eat one of the two pancakes or waffles for the rest of your life, which one? Are them Belgian waffles or Eggos? Let's call them good ones. It's probably the Belgian. Mm. Or unless you like the Eggos. Nah, the Eggos do hit. I grew up off Eggos. So, like, <laughs> Eggos, like, you feel me? Now nah, I'm gonna have to go pancakes. Some some well cooked pancakes is they unbeatable. Okay. Early bird or a night owl? Uh, I'm an early bird. I go to sleep really early. Yeah. yeah I go to sleep. I'm the I'm the same way. The earlier you get up, the sooner you get on the grind and get your stuff done, and then enjoy it after that. Exactly. Early bird gets the worm. They say. That's a fact. Uh, would you rather watch a comedy movie or a drama movie? A uh, comedy for sure. Uh, Halloween or 4th of July? 4th of July. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you had one superpower, what would it be? Uh, teleportation. Okay. Sweet. I always would like to know what the girlfriend was thinking before she left me behind. Right. At <laughs> least <laughs> it leaves me stood up at the bar or something. <laughs> the, uh, if you were a flavor, 
What flavor would you be? I would be caramel chocolate. Yeah. Okay. I always go with mint because I think that I'm mint. Right. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, wow. So what's one more aspect of your game that you're trying to really improve on this season? Um, I feel like I feel like I'm going to improve in all the aspects of my game, but if I had to break it down in one, uh, it'll probably just most definitely be like probably like speed. I just want to get like a lot more faster, a lot more twitchy. But everything else, I mean, I feel like I do really well. Okay. You like Mexican food, or because there's a great taco place up there, up uh, up on the hill. Oh no, I haven't. Honestly, I haven't had no Mexican food since I've been up here. Cause you know, I, I'm used to that LA Mexican food, and, and that's honestly it's untouchable, man. Yeah, that's real Mexican food. Uh, that's a fact. I'm kind of hesitant, man. Honestly, I, I can't lie to you. I'm a little okay. Hesitant. Yeah, I know we always make sure we hit up this one Mexican joint every time we come down to Seattle. So. Yeah. 